Good morning everyone. Uh, kia ora koutou, talo falava and thank you so much for joining me on this Tuesday for my Olympic Ambassador talk. I have been an Olympic Ambassador since 2013 and it's one of the coolest things that I actually get to do because I love connecting with you all and going around to the many schools around New Zealand that I've been to. I'm actually in Cambridge right now in my home and I'd love to know where you guys are watching from today. So if you can, uh, just write in the comments, just on the side, get your mum and dad or your auntie or uncle or whoever you're with in your home right now, your brother or sister, to let me know where you're watching from. Uh, morena everyone and uh, thanks so much for joining us. So in my bubble right now, I have my daughter and my son. My son's Max and he's four and my daughter Poppy is two. And I also have my husband, whose name is Angus, and he's actually a three-time Olympian. I went to the Olympics in 2012 and I went for athletics and I went for the the event called the heptathlon which is a bit of a funny word and we're going to go through what that actually involves later but I thought I'd ask if anyone out there today and please just write in the comments section ask me anything you want today and we'll get to some of the questions uh, at the end but it's awesome to see where you're coming from uh, all around New Zealand all around the world actually uh, this morning so back to my Back to my husband, Angus. As I mentioned, he went to three Olympics and I've actually got some prizes to give out today. So if you listen really well or you know me or you know my husband, you'll have a bit of a head start. But I want to know uh, what sport did my husband, Angus, compete in? And I... For the first person that answers in the comments, I'm going to send them a prize. And I'm gonna give you a few clues. So this sport that he did was actually in the Winter Olympics. So that's the first clue. Anyone know any, have any, having any guesses? No, okay, I can see the comments coming through. Keep them, keep them coming, keep those questions coming. Okay, what? Okay, I'll give you another clue. So his sport, he used to go over 130 kilometers an hour. That's really fast. That's, that's faster than you can go on the motorway. Okay, someone has answered the correct, correctly, and it's Lisa Bogiwalu, I think. I'm sorry if I uh, said your uh, actually, Rachel Axel is the winner. So, yes, I've got a picture of him here. This is my Angus, and he did bobsleigh for New Zealand. So, Rachel, we'll contact you later with some prizes with, um, to get your address off you. So, keep listening, keep asking questions today, and enjoy this talk on the Olympic values. And the sport that I uh, represented New Zealand in is athletics and heptathlon. So what actually is heptathlon? Well, heptathlon is actually made up of seven different track and field events. And they are 100 metre hurdles, high jump, shot put, 200 metres, long jump, javelin, oh, I'm I've got my accounting wrong. Long jump, javelin, and 800 meters. So for me, heptathlon was a really awesome test of my physical physical um, ability, of how high I could jump, how fast I could run, how far I could throw, and a really great test of actually my mental strength. And on a competition day, it was more my... Uh, the mental aspect that really came into play. So right now, because you probably had some morning tea, I thought we'd jump up and run through those events together. So in your lounge or wherever you're watching, 
spare a bit of space if you're watching with your brother or sister or mum or dad get them up too and we're going to go through a little heptathlon together so the first event is the 100 meter hurdle so let's everyone run on the spot and hurdle and hurdle and hurdle and hurdle awesome okay that's done on to high jump okay run 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 and jump up did everyone clear the bar awesome okay next event and new zealand's actually really awesome at this event think about uh dame valerie adams and also tom walsh uh shot put okay so put the shot in your neck um reach up out the front go back and push it forward okay did it go far good okay last event on day one is the 200 meters so in your blocks Set, go, run, 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 sprinting, 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 sprinting. Whew, that's done. Okay, day two is uh, first event, long jump. So run, 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 and jump. Sounds good. Step, stood on the dog. Oh, that's no good. <laughs> Hope the dog's all right. Okay, long jump's done. Javelin, okay. So take your arms back. I'm right handed, so I'm going to hold the javelin in my right hand. Run, 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 and throw the javelin. Awesome. Okay. And last event in the heptathlon, just to finish us off, is the 800. So it's two laps of the track. So we're going to run, run round. Okay. And last lap, and run round, and finish off. Oh, done. Oh, thanks for joining me on the heptathlon. Okay, take a seat. Take a seat. <sighs> right. Whew. Okay, I hope everyone joined that. Enjoyed that. Um, now we're all warmed up. Let's let's get into the juice of today, and that's the Olympic values. And there's actually three different Olympic values, and they are excellence, friendship, and respect. But today I'm going to be sharing with you some of my experiences. And what excellence means to me. So excellence for me, uh, I've got two major learnings about excellence. And for me, when I think of excellence, it's about doing your best. And it doesn't have to be heptathlon. It doesn't have to be athletics. Or it doesn't have to be sport. But excellence for me is about whatever you do, giving it everything trying to be outstanding at something you really want to achieve your best in. And for me, that was certainly heptathlon and high jump. So for me, when I think about excellence, I actually think about excellence takes two things for me. And first and foremost, I'm gonna to talk to you about Excellence, taking courage. And what does courage mean? Have a little think about it where you are. Maybe write to me in the questions um, because I'd love to know what you think uh, courage is for you. So when I think about courage, I think about doing something that maybe I'm a little bit of afraid of, but being really brave and getting over that fear because I don't believe that we should live in fear because fear limits us to be able to be excellent. When I also think about courage, I'm actually think about back to my grandparents and both of sets of my grandparents, my mum and my dad's parents, they immigrated to New Zealand like many of you watching today. But when I think of particularly my dad's parents, my grandparents, my dad came to New Zealand when he was seven from Samoa. And they came to New Zealand with not a lot of money and no English. And they had a lot of mouths to feed because my dad was one of 10 kids. And so when I think about that decision of my grandparents to uproot their lives and come to a place uh, that which they didn't really know about. I am inspired by their courage to be brave, to take a risk. And when you get that little funny feeling in your tummy, it's about doing it anyway. 
So for me, when I think about my Olympic journey and sport, for me, courage, uh, really, th well, when I think about courage in one event in particular, it's the high jump. Because for high jump, I had to run in, and at the later stages of my career, I had to jump over my, oh, little fly. I, I had to jump over a bar which was over my head. And so for me, I had to be really brave and do something which required a lot of effort to be excellent at. And I didn't, wasn't always uh, courageous. In fact, my first time I went to a New Zealand secondary schools competition, the bar was at one meter 35. And I uh, ran up, it was the opening height, and I ran up to the bar and I just knocked it off with my hand. And I did that three times because I was scared of what might happen. I was scared that I might fall over. I was scared that I'd miss. And I wasn't, I hadn't quite trained being brave and being courageous so I could be excellent. So many, many years later, after lots of training and lots of work on, on being excellent and training and in competition, I actually jumped the second highest jump a New Zealander has, has ever jumped. And I'm gonna show you that jump now because it's really special to me because it was in the event when I qualified for the Olympics. And I knew my personal best before this event was one meter 84. So you can measure these out on the wall after my talk today, these heights. But today I'm gonna to show you a jump and the bar is at one meter 91 and I'm on my final attempt of three. Let's have a look. And you can see I'm very, very happy right now that I've got over the bar and I think that if the bar was any higher <laughs> than it was on that day, that I probably wouldn't have cleared it. So I just snuck over and here it is again. And I'm really thinking about unleashing something pretty special right now. And on that day, it was really cool because it really, that jump there set me up to be able to go on and qualify for the Olympics. So the New Zealand record is one meter 92. And as a heptathlete, I jumped one meter 91. And I'm really proud of that because it really took, took a lot of courage for me to be excellent at that event. So if you're wondering how high 191 is, well, I measured it out this morning. And so I'm 176 right here and I've got a mark right here. So that's 191, okay? So I had to look at the bar and think, how am I going to get over that? So excellence, everyone, takes courage. And it takes a while to actually develop courage to be excellence and that, to be excellent. And that's actually my second uh, point I want to talk to you about this morning. And if you if you think if you're asking any questions along the way, please do get your mum or dad to write in the comment box. I can see them coming in. Thanks, Brooke, um, Morgan, Cameron, and Anita Hawkins. Great to see you online. Uh, let me know if you if you've come to my. Uh, if you've come to my, if I've come to your school as well, uh, I'd love to I'd love to uh, hear from you again. So excellence takes courage, but my second point I want to talk to you today about is excellence also takes effort. And effort to me is time, and also commitment, and a lot of hard work. And I grew up in the middle of two boys. Those are my brothers right there. That's my older brother Gaz, and he is actually holding my younger brother Rich. And it was pretty cool, like Susie Bates talked about last week, to be to grow up uh, with boys, um, because I was always trying to keep up with them. Uh, I was I 
was very, we were all very lucky. We grew up in a very supportive family with two amazing parents. And I'm sure my mum's watching today. So hi, mum. Unfortunately, my dad passed away. So he's watching from upstairs. But uh, we were very lucky to be encouraged and supported in all the sports that we did. And I know a lot of, uh, a lot of the guys have talked about... Um, Got this annoying fly in my room. That's a bit of a shame, isn't it? <laughs> uh, this is what happens when you live uh, close to animals. But uh, we were encouraged to do lots of sports, and I think that's a really great thing to do. As Kiwi kids, we played everything, and I would encourage you guys all to uh, to get involved in sport. Uh, not only for the great physical benef physical health benefits it gives you, but also for the great mental health uh, benefit it gives you, the well-being benefits it gives you as well. So excellence does take effort. And I remember I was eight years old when I first watched the Olympic Games in 1992. I can, I can still remember seeing Lorraine Moller win her bronze medal in the marathon in the in Barcelona and it was something which really stuck in my mind and as a sporty kid I was totally inspired by Lorraine Moller's effort that day and also just by the Olympic Games and I thought wow this is so cool I really want to do this one day and in 1996 uh, I again got to watch the Olympic Games and by then I was 12 and I was really into netball and I was really into athletics as well in the summertime. And I started to, certainly for me, that Olympic seed of wanting to represent my country, of wanting to be the best at something, was really sown. And then I first represented New Zealand when I was 16. When I was at high school, when I went to Rotorua Girls High School, I grew up in Rotorua. I went to Otonga Primary School. Hello, anyone that's watching from my hometown. It's so awesome and I'm really proud to be from Rotorua. But I was a talented sports person, I guess, but I worked really hard. And I was lucky to have a good supportive network around me. And I started focusing on athletics in year 12, or um, back in my day it was sixth form. And uh, I then went to my first Commonwealth Games when I was 22. But when, I, when you think about when I first saw the Olympics, I was eight years old. And then I first represented New Zealand when I was 16 and then I first re went to my first of two Commonwealth Games when I was 22 but it took me till I was 28 till, till my Olympic dream came true and that didn't come about through lack of wanting it to happen sooner I was close in 2008 uh, but not really ready for it mentally uh, but it, it took me a long time to figure out different ways where I could be a better athlete and show excellence in the heptathlon to qualify and represent New Zealand at the Olympics. And I'm really proud to say I am New Zealand Olympian number 1134. Because for me, uh, it was a huge journey of lots and lots of training with lots and lots of amazing people and friends all over the world and it took me a long time to figure out how I could be excellent but that effort has certainly helped me not only in sport but in life and I think one of the great things about sport is that it certainly teaches you uh, lots of life lessons as well so for me it's about telling you guys that you too can be excellent about with whatever your big dreams are. But it will take courage, which I know you all have, and it will take effort, which I know you all can do if you're really passionate about something. 
So I've got a little challenge for you guys today and I mentioned about prizes earlier and I've got another prize for those people who take up this challenge today. So what I would like you to do, and I know that um, Richie and Brooke and Susie, who's, who spoke to you earlier on these online talks, uh, offered you a challenge as well. But today I want you to, after this is finished, draw a picture of what excellence is like, what would look like for you if you were courageous and you put in effort. And if drawing's not your thing, it's not mine, but I'm drawing a lot of things with my kids at the moment, then maybe write a poem or a little story and then I want you to share it on the New Zealand Olympic uh, social media pages or share it to me on maybe on my Instagram page, which is at Sarah Cowley Ross. And definitely whichever way you share it to us, tag, so hashtag earn the fern, okay? And I would love to see it, okay? So that's my challenge to you. And the best four, I'm going to send out a prize, okay? I'm going to send out some kit, some Olympic kit that I've got, that I've been doing a bit of cleaning up, and it's, I'm going to send it out to you. So get creating, get creative, and be excellent while you're doing it. So in the comments box, if you've been asking questions, keep asking them, and I'm going to answer some now. And also, I want you to think about, uh, let me know how you are going to be excellent or courageous in your life. So now's the time we're going to ask a few questions. And I love seeing what you guys are saying about courage. Aston, I think courage means that you have faith in yourself. And I love that, Aston. Uh, room 20 from Carmo Intermediate School. Hi, guys. Whangarei from the, the beautiful north. Behind every champion, there is a team of champions behind you. Who were some of your close ayanga, Fano, that inspired you when you were growing up? Well, I, as I mentioned, I'm really, really grateful uh, to my parents, my mum and dad, um, Robin and Jerry Cowley and my brothers, Gaz and Richie. And my brothers were really sporty as well. Uh, so my immediate family were definitely, uh, were definitely uh, super supportive of me and definitely helped me uh, be the best athlete. But I have a really wide, big family and everyone has pitched in it, certainly. The Rotorua community as well have, were awesome and not only supporting me emotionally, but um, it cost a lot of money to be an athlete and financially we had to do a lot of fundraising over many years and that's uh, definitely, everyone has pitched in along the way. So I've got some great friends who were there right from the start. So Somerville Intermediate, room 35. You guys have been watching so well. I've been watching you guys ask so many questions. It's so cool. Uh, Hayley, nice to hear from you. Um, you have done a great work on your detective work and that is so cool. So how do you train for all these seven disciplines? You have, you must be busy fitting everything into your schedule. Well, fortunately, I was a full-time athlete, um, a very poor full-time athlete, but I really wanted to commit to this because sports, you have a very short window in, of your life. And so I was really lucky, Hayley, that I had a really great coach. My last coach was Elena Brown, and she, uh, along uh, with my team, who included my husband, who did my strength and conditioning work, uh, all worked together to do a program for me. So I actually didn't really have to worry about what I was going to do. I just had to do the hard work. So they uh, they did it. They planned it all out and uh, told me what to do when. So that was helpful. Uh, what is the hardest discipline to do? Uh, for me, it was actually the 200 meters. Um, I was really good to always really good to 150 and then it was like this fridge jumped on my back and every time my legs couldn't work and I'm sure some of you are thinking mm, a fridge that's a bit weird but um, my what we call lactic acid 
tolerance was uh, pretty low. So if I was to go back and do heptathlon one day, which I'm not going to, uh, I'm really comfortable with how I went, uh, it would be to be able to run a good 200. Uh, why did you decide not to do the heptathlon and do high jump? Well, Hayley, you have really done your research. Well done. Uh, I decided after the London Olympics to do disconcentrate on high jump for the next Commonwealth Games. I, my body was pretty beaten up after training for heptathlon for all those years. And I just decided I really wanted to go to one last Commonwealth Games, but I knew I couldn't really sustain that level of training for the heptathlon heptathlon and actually high jump was pretty brutal on my um on my body as well you're you're putting about um 15 15 times even higher 15 times body weight into your feet um so i've actually got uh pins in both my feet holding them together okay angela king did you set goals when you were younger and aspire to be an olympian yes actually i did i was really lucky because my my parents both really instilled in us a goal setting um, mentality so we set goals from a young age uh and every january when we used to go back to school they were always uh, we always had to sit down and we, we didn't just write sporting goals. We wrote about I will academic roles. Actually, the academic ones had to come first. And then we, we wrote about, and it wasn't just I'll do better. It was if you're writing a goal, you need to have a measure. And so I was doing smart goals from a young age, and it's something that I still do now. Uh, Rachel, Axel, who is your sporting hero? My sporting hero, well, actually, I grew up watching a lot of basketball videos uh, with my brothers because my dad played basketball for New Zealand. He was a, a tall black and he instilled this love of basketball. So I have to say, I watched a lot of Michael Jordan videos and Larry Bird videos, and I'm so pumped about the uh, Netflix uh, Michael Jordan Chicago Bulls uh, documentary that's happening right now. It's so good. Um, but closer to home, Bernice Minnie was definitely a hero for me because she did athletics when she was little and she played netball and I, probably wanted to be a silver fern first because that's what I saw on the TV and I she was also half summer on as well and so for me she was really uh, really a big hero of mine uh, right Lisa Bogawalu Wellington what age did you start training seriously so i i always kind of as did lots of different sport um but i i when i was like 16 i kind of got a bit more serious into athletics but i didn't really become super serious until i went to university um i've got a physio degree and a communications degree and i went to physio school straight after high school and um, hello to all my physio friends with their kids watching uh, and all my high school friends watching as well. Uh, it's so great to see you guys online. Uh, and so it was really when I was at university and I was uh, 18, 19 when, when that happened. So we've got time for maybe a couple more questions. Oh, Jamie's telling me uh, that uh, her dream is to be a pilot. That is so cool, Jamie. And Xavier McKenzie and Lockie Reed from Edgecombe. Hello, guys. Uh, what event do you get most nervous about? I think I was probably most nervous about an 800 because it's the last event and I'm really tired. And sometimes I would have, I would know how many, how fast I would have to run to be able to get the points that I needed to uh, to become a come a certain place or qualify for a certain event. Okay, last question from Thea. Did you ever feel like stopping sport because of the challenges that you faced? And apologies, Jamie, I've just realized I, I said you were a girl, but I had another Jamie on my mind who's my friend 
and uh, so Jamie I know you're a boy and I'm sorry I said that that you're a girl but Thea uh, did you ever feel like stopping sport because of the challenges that you faced yeah there was certainly a couple of times uh, where I was really struggling in my career um, and I was working away and training really hard but I wasn't getting the results when I was competing that I really wanted to and that's often really devastating and heartbreaking and uh, for me I thought oh gosh like what am I doing uh, I'm getting older and should I just should I just quit and do other things uh, earn some money or uh, do other things or try another sport um, but you know what I'm so glad that I didn't quit because I really wanted to be an Olympian and oh here's my little boy Max you say hi to everyone hi everyone so I hope you're having a good day having a good day wave and I'm really proud of the fact that I didn't quit because I was courageous enough to want to be excellent. So that's, uh, I didn't quit. So Caroline Swain, I think these are our friends from the UK. What advice would you give to a 15 year old athlete, a 15 year old who wants to be an athlete? I would say, have fun. And this is Poppy, you say hi to everyone. Uh, I would say, have fun. Uh, and look after your body. So I'm sorry guys, that's all the time we have for questions today, but I promise I can see that, that some of them aren't answered. So I'll go back and answer them in, 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 uh, later today. Uh, just a reminder about the challenge that I've set for you today. So if you can draw a picture or write a poem or write a little story about the ways in which you could be excellent in your life. Yeah. And how you're going to be courageous and how you're going to give effort to be able to do that. Uh, excellence is worth it. It takes effort and it, you, it requires courage but it's a really amazing feeling for your dreams to come true. So I hope you guys have a great Tuesday. It's so awesome that you could all join. And I just want to thank you so much uh, for coming online. We've got another ambassador talk later this week. So keep an eye on the New Zealand Olympic team Facebook page. Uh, we are all in this team together. We are the New Zealand team. And I uh, have really loved talking to you today. So uh, from my bubble to yours, stay safe, stay well and be awesome out there.